Where my dogs at? Yeah, welcome me back. Where my dogs at? Yeah, welcome me back. Where my dogs at? Yeah, welcome me back. It's not a nigga single again. Yeah, I'm single. In the club tryna mingle. Fuck relationships, cause a nigga never been for. Can't have just one like a Pringle. So I'ma keep it simple. Listen here, icy on my wrist of wear. No guilt, I'm in the clear. Photos of my ex on my Instagram disappear. Yeah, I'm single. In the club tryna mingle. Fuck relationships, cause a nigga never been for. So it went from, as far as meetings are concerned, it went from. Violator and Jive to mm -hmm. Straight to Atlantic, or you was we other we labels. We never met with nobody. We never met at Atlantic. Yeah, like I because Mike Mike Curran had called, and we didn't. We we never met with him, mm -hmm. and so we never met with them. But that's what we. It was like they interested. Benny was like, I want to do the deal with them, so we had to make the best of the situation at that point. Yeah, it was like, it was like All right. and still, this is two thousand four. Right. So that was still the brass a major ring. label. That yeah. was that was the that was the golden that was the yeah, golden, was the golden group. Standard. Like, yeah, let's yeah. go. So it was like, all right, cool, we there. Because at that time they had Fat Joe, they had Ti, they had um, Ti was on fire. That was before the fabulous music train. Yeah, the fat yeah. Because uh, that was another thing juvenile. too. Juvenile. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, trick. And that was the thing too. Like we didn't get to you know get into the dock, but again, it was just transition, man. You know, so two thousand four when we signed. This is right when Warner had underwent this huge corporate fucking buyout, mm. right? You know what I mean? And so all the old guard that was at Def Jam, like Julie, um, Leo. Kaiser, Leo, mm. all of them, they were at Def Jam. And so this corporate buyout shit happening, this fucking billionaire pissing contest. <laughs> and so now they're the guy, they're over in the Warner system. Mm. So we were coming into the system at a time when a, we're a group, you know, from the South. You know, we have this album called The Minstrel Show that they're trying to figure out how the fuck we sell this. And at the same time, they're trying to figure out this new system because they were new to the Warner system. Mm. You know what I mean? And and we just kind of landed right then and there. And, um, you know, man, that was just one of the things where at that time we didn't understand how those changes on a macro level would affect us on a micro level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We just didn't get it. You know what I mean? And um, that was a, you know, kind of kind of dovetailed into us doing our documentary. Um, we just was like, yeah, this makes more sense to do it ourselves and do it, you know, put it out on YouTube and go direct to the fans. Because what was happening in Hollywood now, it just looks like exactly like what was happening with labels 20 years ago mm -hmm. when everything started consolidating and, you know, everything was just kind of breaking down. I'm like. Yeah, dude. We've seen this. We've seen this movie before. Yeah. So, you, so the, the business side of what was happening at, Atl at Atlantic for you guys was was good. Their yeah, business was the business straight. was fine. I mean, listen, you know, we you know we had a uh, I had a, a conversation uh, with uh, Julie Greenwald. This is this was like a year or so ago, but um, you know, because we were gonna get her for the documentary, but as we kept shooting, we just saw like, okay, we don't really need her. We got the story. But um, you know, and I told her, I said, man, the thing that's so crazy about this doc, the thing I love. It's one of the rare music documentaries where the major label actually is not the bad guy. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> you know, that's a fact. I you watched know? it. Yeah. Thank I've you, brother. That. Thank I you. Watched it. Yeah. It's like, yo, like it wasn't. You know, they did right by us. You know, it's we, out on YouTube. Make sure y'all go people. Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on YouTube right now. Um, you but nah. The title. Oh, they don't watch, watch the little brother story. Out on YouTube right now. Yeah, go pull it. Yeah. So nah, man. So yeah, they they took a chance on us. They let us, you know, do it and. They let us do us. And I just remember, you know, kind of what we talked to before the break of just kind of the major label system and mm -hmm. seeing kind of the, the disillusionment and the death of that dream. I think my moment where it was just became crystal clear. Um, I remember sitting in the office one time with Julie and shout out to Julie Greenwald, man. I got love for Julie. Like she always shot straight. She didn't bullshit. Mm -hmm. She didn't waste our time. You know what I mean? Like she was funny as hell. She just... Fonte, Fonte, you gotta make content. It's content. You gotta make content. Like she, <laughs> she was just this fucking ball of energy that was just all over the fucking place. But um, but now, nah, man, I remember sitting in her office one time. We were having a conversation, and and um, I was just like, yeah, Julie. I said, so what's your next move? Like, what you think you gonna do after this? <laughs> I said, so what you think? What's your next move? What what you gonna do after this? Like, what you doing? And she was like, yeah, you know, my kids. She's like, my daughter's getting kind of older. You know, they kind of need me to be around a little more. And she said, you know, I'm I'm looking at you know Fuse, you know Fuse. 
and at the time Fuse was the station, network, the network, the TV network. Yeah. And she was like, "Yeah, Fuse." I was like, "Oh yeah, Fuse. We got to go over there a little later on and you know do an interview or whatever." She was like, "Yeah." She's like, yeah, me and Edgar, yeah, we, we think about buying Fuse. <laughs> nigga, we just sitting in there like. Real nonchalant. Nigga, what? <laughs> Real, the same way we would talk about, yo, I think I'm a cop the fours, or I'm a cop the dude, whatever. <laughs> she, she's talking about buying a goddamn a network, nigga. God damn. And I'm just like. With a straight face. With a straight face. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there, I'm just like, yeah, I'm sitting here trying to explain. We're trying to explain our art and our existence to someone that is buying a network on mm. casually casually it's just like on a tuesday <laughs> on a tuesday like, nigga, club going like up this. on a tuesday <laughs> yeah the like, disc, i'm like 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 instagram might delete later right buying that work i don't know felt, felt cute, cute. Felt cute. might delete later, later. Yeah. that was exactly what it was That's that was crazy. the kind of flex that was yeah. the ig flex and old to let you know score. that you've made some real wrong decisions where did i go wrong yeah <laughs> but it was one of those things you just see i was like okay yeah this is you know, we we love the music, but this is a business. It is a corporation. It is, you know, we talk about, you know, when we went and we dropped Minstrel Show and we went through the office and there was like no music playing. Like my idea of a record company, I'm thinking, it's like, nigga, if it's a record company, music gonna be playing. Mm -hmm. If I walked into Krispy Kreme, it'd be donuts in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, shit, I'm like, y'all ain't got no records playing, it's nothing. Yeah. And so I think for me and Pooh, that was really uh, just that kind of realization of like, this is not what we thought it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. And it was never any, on my, on my side, you know, it was never any bitterness or anything towards the major label system. It was just an education. It was just really having that and then seeing, okay, this is what it is. Like, ah, oh, I got it. Mm. This ain't got shit to do with music. Nope. So it's about the money. <laughs> Which is wild. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. Which is wild. So it's just like, and, and, you know, but once you have that understanding, it's like, oh, okay, cool. So let me just, I have to figure out a system for myself where it can really be just about the music and getting it direct to my people. And once I kind of had that realization, um, it really changed my relationship with the art form mm. um, because I found a place that could work for me. And uh, that's something that I think a lot of young artists you know, you the biggest lesson, one of the biggest lessons we learned, you have to define success for yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? You yeah. have to define it because what's successful for this person, you know, for you, that, you know, you know, one person's medicine could be your poison. Mm. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. That's so, true. you know what I mean? So it's like you had to kind of learn that. And uh, that we, was what that time was We talked was like. about that off camera. We were, yeah, yeah. We were discussing how there, there's a, a general theme of how Drake's, Mm. Blueprint mm. comes mm. from you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of a lot mm. of people will agree that you fathered a lot of what he does, singing the patterns, bars, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. But you haven't gone that far. Yeah. Was that intentional? Absolutely. I, I mean, listen. You know, it's it's easy to uh, kind of sit back. You know, you never want to play, you know, Monday morning quarterback, right? And be okay. like. Oh, I could have did. I could. Nah. You know what I mean? For me, I think going through the major label ex deal, I remember when Minstrel Show came out and, you know, the first week we did what, like 20, 18, 18 some shit like that. 18. 18,000 records. And this is in 2005. So 18,000 records at Gosh, that good. time, that shit was like, you That's were amazing. a failure. No, it's good now. It's good now. Yeah, like yeah, now, yeah. nigga, if you sold 18,000 physical records, then niggas will throw you a parade out of this bitch. <laughs> but in 05, that was just you failure. You, 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 you bricked. Yeah, yeah, you bricked. Yeah. You bricked, right? You and so, wood. Yeah, you went wood. wood. And it was just wood. like, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nigga. <laughs> okay, yeah. You went linoleum. You went wood. <laughs> right. You went linoleum. You leaned over with it. You figure went wood. Figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah, figure it out. Die for that one, nigga. But that, was, but that was it, man. I mean, like, at, at that time, you know, we did it. And so I remember, like, we, we sold, you know, those records. And I just remember, you know, afterwards, just thinking, it was just like, man, 18,000 records for this label is a failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nigga, if I sold 18,000 records for me? Independently? Yeah, independently. That's, 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 that's a cash out. That's a cash out. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that was just the part where I, I just understanding of just, 
what success means to you, you have to really define that because if you allow other people to project what they think is successful, you know, you're, you're never going to be happy with where you are. You're never going to be happy with who you are. And, um, you know, for me, you know, when I look at, you know, artists that we were served as a bridge for, you know, like a Drake or a Kendrick or Cole, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? All these artists that have gone on to just do amazing things, make a great, make amazing records. You know what I'm saying? I sit back, personally, I sit back and look at that and I'm just like, yo, that's amazing. That's great. I'm glad that these brothers are able to take what we did and continue it and take it to higher levels. Mm. I don't want to be none of these niggas. Mm. I don't want that life. Mm. Feeling in the world was holding my own gun. I'm hypertensive, but all my decisions been wholesome. My independence had me flipping on siblings I stole from. Said I'm just big and loud. Well, half a pound is my solid treatment. I punched out plugs I could have stopped from eating. Stash of the Prada. Shy nigga got him. Gun in the mass in the grass. It's a pop up. I was Robin Hood with the stock. Don't get shot up. Now I'm watching Robin Hood in my stocks. They just shot up.